this video we'll discuss about gingival hyperplasia so gingival hyperplasia is basically the increase in the size of gingiva you can call it as a gingival overgrowth so in this diagram we can see the gingival overgrowth now it happens due to a lot of factors and we'll discuss each of them so first of all it is classified into two which is uh, chronic and uh, chronic and acute that is the inflammatory gingival hyperplasia so first of all we discuss about the inflammatory gingival hyperplasia now in this what happens is uh, you have two phases one is acute and one is chronic right so in the uh, acute one you will see that there will be a localized painful rapidly expanding swelling of gingiva whereas here what you see is the it will be localized or generalized painless slowly expanding lesion now here what you see is uh, it will expand in the interdental papilla as well as the marginal gingiva Whereas in this one, it will be interdental papilla, marginal gingiva, plus you will also have attached gingiva involved. Then coming on to the site we have done, then coming on to the etiology. What really happens in here is that the bacteria is carried deep into the bacteria is carried deep into tissues with a foreign substance deep tissues with a foreign substance embedded in gingiva uh, discussing the etiology of the chronic inflammatory gingival hyperplasia what you can see is there can be an anatomic abnormality poor oral hygiene improper restorative and orthodontic appliance prolonged ex exposure to dental plaque now we'll discuss another cause which is the idiopathic cause so idiopathic gingival hyperplasia uh, we do not know why it is happening so the cause is undetermined you will see a characteristic minutely pebbled surface it will affect the attached gingiva interdental papilla plus marginal gingiva so it is paying form and almost uh, of the leathery consistency then coming on to a very important cause which is drug induced in drug induced it can happen due to anti convulsants calcium channel blockers and immunosuppressive drugs now they will it will be seen that it will first affect it will cause a small painless bead like enlargement of interdental papilla then it will extend to the buccal and lingual margins of gingiva then uh, it is basically it will happen in the maxillary and the mandibular anterior region so anterior region of both the jaws both jaws there will be a characteristic increase in stippling of gingiva stippling of gingiva right now we have discussed three now one more um, it is the conditioned gingival hyperplasia conditioned gingival hyperplasia now here we can discuss three hormonal vitamin c deficiency allergic 
allergic mainly happens in females and young adults it is located on the oral aspect of attached gingiva there is a loss of stippling in drug induced there was increase in stippling there is loss of stippling now in vitamin c deficiency uh, what comes to mind is curvy so it will be soft friable enlargement soft friable enlargement with a pseudo membranous formation the pseudo membranous formation in hormonal what we will see is uh, we will see that it will be more prominent intra proximally inter proximally it will also be soft and friable it will bleed spontaneously just on touching it will bleed okay and it will be bright red or magenta in color this is the condition so we had hormonal vitamin c and allergy now here i can discuss some more few of them more so uh, it can also be due to some malignant causes uh, or basically neoplastic changes in neoplasms you have benign and malignant right so in benign and malignant what you see is uh papilloma then you can see uh, peripheral giant cell granuloma or in fibroma here in malignant carcinoma malignant melanoma okay now uh, it can also occur due to the uh, certain systemic diseases okay so let's take the arrow from here to here systemic diseases in systemic diseases we'll mention about leukemia and granulomatous disease now here you need to remember a keyword which is called as strawberry gums for granulomatous okay over here what you will see is there will be enlargement uh yes over here it will be purplish in color okay uh now this is all about the true gingival hyperplasia now there is also a type which is called as false gingival hyperplasia now what has what is actually false gingival hyperplasia this is basically occurring due to some um enlargement of the uh, enlargement of the structures which are present beneath so what is present beneath gingiva it is the bone okay or the underlying dental tissues so we'll discuss it into headings underlying osseous structures and underlying dental structures in dental structures basically now you would ask what does come what does dental structures comprise of so basically we are talking about the unerupted teeth that are there in the deciduous dentition so um, over here in the osseous lesions first of all um, when we uh, read about the bone diseases we saw that there is gingival hyperplasia which is false it can occur in fibrous dysplasia it can occur in paget's disease it can occur in cherubism okay it can also occur in uh, central giant cell granuloma okay then it can also occur due to some structures like tories okay over here as i told you earlier it is due to the eruption of impacted teeth now um, what in, uh, what happens really is uh, the gingiva suppose there is an imposition of the bulk of the gingiva so on the normal prominence of the gingival half of the crown so uh, to sum up i'll write the features and the condition okay now if we have a firm hypertrophied gum then it is drug induced so it is phenytoin or you can write cyclosporin if it is soft and friable soft and friable so it will be scurvy then if we have hemorrhagic 
with bluish color and it has um, some uh, spongy character so it will be since it's blue cyanotic heart disease if we have hypertrophic hemorrhagic we can call it as thrombocytopenia acute leukemia now the last one if it is punctuate stippled blue line on gums then it is basically due to the chronic lead mercury or due to the bismuth poisoning now what is the modality of the treatment in treatment what happens is we do it in two phases in phase one and phase two first you will do scaling root planning and oral hygiene instructions in second you will do gingivo plasty and gingivo tomi so this completes gingival hyperplasia